Hey there, welcome back. Today we have an exciting project that I've been putting off for far too long, and that is getting my old, old workstation back into work. Basically, this little powerhouse hosts an Intel i9-9900K, which was the first generation i9, by the way, which was very exciting to me at the time, so I just had to have it in my workstation. Uh, the i9 is mounted to a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master motherboard with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 MHz Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB RAM and an EVGA RTX 2080 Ti XC Black Edition. Basically top the line for its era. Let's bring this beast back to life and get it into a new line of work here in 2023. All right, so let's start by retrieving the workstation from where it sat for the past two years or so, right here in the middle of the floor of my 3D printing slash PC computer parts room. I did use it for a while, just as you see it right now, as mirrored network attached storage with only one terabyte of storage. You can still actually see the hard drives I installed in down there. Once I started making 4K YouTube videos, I quickly found out that one terabyte of network attached storage was not gonna cut it, and that's when I made the NZXT H1 NAS build we did last year. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to check that out. All right, let me get this somewhere where we can clean it. Okay, so we're outside now, and I know a couple of you are wondering what's up with all these cables hanging out everywhere. Well, funny story, when I originally built the system, it was in a larger case, and I don't remember exactly what case, unfortunately. I think it was the Corsair Crystal 280 or something, it had like a really large back area on it. It was like a dual chamber case design. And I built it all really nice and did all the cable management and everything. But unfortunately, it didn't really fit on my desk space the way I liked because of how wide the footprint was. So I ended up coming across this more compact Corsair case for cheap on the used market, and I swapped everything in. Unfortunately, because there's a lot of this proprietary Corsair RGB uh, lighting and fan wiring, cable management was a real problem. This case was only supposed to be a temporary solution to my desk space problem because I had actually planned on getting a different brand new case. But once I swapped everything in, I ended up being lazy and it just ended up staying like this forever. I'll try to find a picture of when I was actively using this thing as like my daily driver. I just had like green painters tape like wrapped around holding the cables up off the desk. Of course, I couldn't get the side panels on without a decent amount of cable management. So I got lazy and I just literally never put the side panels on. This was supposed to be a temporary solution, remember? <laughs> One quick note guys, one of the absolute best ways I found to clean dust from PC parts and make them like new is to use some sort of air source. I'm using this plug-in blower here, but you could use a can of compressed air or an actual air compressor and get a soft bristled paintbrush. Dust is quite clingy, so even after giving it a good blast of air, there's usually still a decent amount of dust left behind. So if you just agitate it with the paintbrush while blowing a little bit of air at it, it cleans right up like new. Now that we have this little spaghetti mess physically cleaned up, let's address the issue of missing parts. This thing has never had the side panels on it for as long as I've owned it. Like I said, I put the parts in, never bothered with cable management, and it's been just like this. And when I was running this as a little network attached storage device, I took out the GPU to use it for a different project or something because it wasn't needed for storage. So that should also be interesting to find, but I'm sure I have an idea of where it is. Before we took it outside, you may have seen a little clip of me taking this random stuff out of the case. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is just extra cables for this power supply that I didn't want to lose, so I just threw them in. This is actually an original fan from the 2080 Ti that was in here. Basically, it developed a bit of a wobble. I knew I was going to have to replace it at some point. One day I was gaming and it shot, like I just heard something bouncing around inside the case and it was this thing. It launched off and it was laying right about here, uh, right up until I removed it today. And this little magnetic fan base thing was another little project I was working on. Basically, it's got a couple magnets embedded in the plastic here. This is for a 140 mil fan, so you just use two normal fan screws and it allows you to install a fan somewhere where you may potentially want more cooling, like drawing heat out of a graphics card or blowing down on a motherboard or something. I don't know. I never actually ended up putting this on my store, but if this is something that is at all interesting to you guys, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll go back and revisit doing something with this. Now I will say at the very least, I was smart enough to leave the thumb screws in here for the side panels. So at least I didn't lose those. Oh yeah, even the even these uh, back ones here, I still have these installed. So I just need to actually find the panels. Uh, no, that is not for this computer. I think this side panel glass might actually be for thermal take P3 case that I'm not running the glass on because I wanted it to be as thin as possible. Found the kit tin. I spy my little eye, potentially these 
side panels. So one, filthy. So that makes sense. They've been sitting around for a while. But uh, let's see if they're the right ones. Okay, so now this thing is back together about as much as I'm comfortable with. You guys know the whole bad juju about fully assembling the PC. So I got the back off, the front off. If anything is not plugged in right or something, I can get in there quickly. But I just realized that I haven't actually told you what this old beast is gonna be doing for me now in its new life. I'm going to be using Blue Iris, which is a Windows-based software for recording and managing video from pretty much as many cameras as you'd like, security cameras specifically. Blue Iris features some really cool things like AI machine vision to identify various objects such as license plate numbers, facial recognition, uh, different animals, skateboards, bikes, and much more. Now I'm sentimental and since this was the first computer I ever owned that I can actually say did some work for me and it's also the reason why I never sold any of the parts from it and I've held on to it for these past few years. I wanted to restore it back to its original condition as far as hardware goes for how it was when I was daily driving it. That means the Overkill 2080 Ti uh, you know, went back in, even though it might not be the most optimized hardware configuration for specifically running Blue Iris. This also means that I'll be installing Windows 10 back on this machine eventually, uh, because that's what I ran on it when I daily drove it, and it's still a perfectly relevant operating system, and Blue Iris actually prefers, or I think is required to run Windows 10 still. I'm not sure if they actually have it on Windows 11 yet. Last I checked a couple weeks ago, it was still on Windows 10 only. Now that we have the 9900K workstation fully cleaned up and actually this is the nicest most functional condition it's ever been in the side panels can probably actually go on it's time to finally hit the power button and ensure that everything is working i originally was just going to start by just reinstalling windows on here and doing a brand new fresh slate but i think it'd be more fun first of all to see if it will actually boot back into the old windows install it's still on here i have all my files and everything backed up and taken off so nothing on here is important anymore, but I'm just curious to see if I can get right back to where I left off a few years ago. Now also of note, this was not the CPU cooler I used when this thing was my daily driver. I actually don't remember exactly what model AIO I had on it or what I ended up using the AIO that was in here in, but I ended up swapping it out for some point for this Thermaltake Water 3.0 single 120 mil AIO. Uh, it was working fine, but it's gotta be at least seven years old. So I think at some point I will end up probably swing this out, but we'll see if it works for now. All right. Wow. Just like that. CPU temperatures look okay. It's sitting around 30 to 45 idle. GPU sitting at 35 Celsius. I don't have this connected to the internet right now because I didn't want to find out what happens with Windows Update and stuff, but I'm gonna see if I have Cinebench or anything installed on this. Looks like I have Cinebench R20, so let's just hit it. 79 is our hottest core so far. Our highest frequency, 4.9 gigahertz. Hottest core, 81, 82. Hottest core, 84. There we go, all, all cores hit 4.9 gigahertz. Highest core got to 84. Well, on Cinebench R20 here, the i9-9900K CPU comes in at 4,000 points and we just did a 4,612. So good enough for now. I'm actually quite surprised. I noticed my Corsair fans aren't lighting up. What's that about? Hey, there we go. For some reason, I had the brightness turned off on those fans. Figured that out pretty quickly, actually, surprisingly. I think that's pretty close to how I used to run the lights. Uh, good enough for now. I also saw in Task Manager that there's two hard drives in this. Just curious to know what they are. So we have our RAID 1, which is these two guys. Some sort of Western Digital Blue drive down here. And then I think we have a 250 gigabyte Western Digital drive up here. And there we have it. Our 9900K 2080 Ti workstation is now fully revived and ready to take on a new life as a security camera hub running Blue Iris. And I can't properly communicate how excited I actually am to have this little thing back up and running and knowing that it's going back into like a functional everyday use case. The only question mark is this seven year old AIO that's in here. We did run a quick Cinebench R20 run and it seems to be working fine right now. And Blue Iris is not gonna hammer this CPU the way that like Cinebench does, so maybe it'll be fine, but time will tell. 
We actually have this PC successor kicking around the office here as well, which currently is not working. Remember, this is my old, old workstation. So I also have my old workstation kicking around here as well. It's been out of commission for about a year and it still has parts that are in warranty. So I wanna get that looked at sooner than later in case I have to RMA any dead parts. And guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey of reviving and repurposing our old, old workstation. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out if you like this video. And I hope that you found this video helpful and inspiring for your own projects.